When empaths get stuck in childhood, healing from childhood wounds. Hey there, fellow empaths and energy feelers. Today's video could be a game changer for you because we're delving into a topic that might just transform your entire life. We'll explore how you show up in the world, how you establish safety, and why you might unknowingly block incredible connections from entering your life. Plus, I'll reveal the one thing that has the power to revolutionize your life from the inside out. Trust me, this insight could have saved me years of struggle if I'd known it sooner. As I delved into researching this video, I uncovered fascinating insights into the dynamics of empath-narcissist relationships, familial patterns, and the intricate dance between empaths and narcissists. It shed light on why certain childhood dynamics persist into adulthood and how they shape our relationships. Speaking from personal experience, I discovered that many of these patterns stem from the energies present in our upbringing, often inherited from our parents. In my case, I inherited a pattern from my dad, a classic nice guy people pleaser who unwittingly attracted my narcissistic ex stepmom into our lives. Their tumultuous relationship left a lasting impact on me, shaping my journey as an empath. If any of this resonates with you, if you felt the echoes of these dynamics in your own life, then this video is for you. Join me as we unravel the mysteries of empathic energy and uncover the keys to transforming our lives for the better. Hit that subscribe button and let's embark on this transformative journey together. You know, something I've noticed while looking into this is how often people who are always trying to please others end up sacrificing themselves. Let me tell you about my dad's experience a few years back. He's a fire investigator, really top-notch at his job. So he went for a promotion to manage the team he'd been a part of for years. He was a shoe in more than qualified, but they gave the job to someone else, which didn't make sense to him or to me, knowing how skilled my dad is. But as I thought about it more, I realized this is a common thing. People who are always trying to please others can hit roadblocks in their careers without even realizing it. My dad, for example, always went above and beyond, but he lacked that assertive leadership vibe needed for management roles. So, despite his hard work, he didn't get the promotion. He was pretty bummed, understandably. This happens a lot with people pleasers. They're great at what they do, but they hold back from asserting themselves, which can hold them back from leadership opportunities and can even affect their relationships. Imagine someone who's an empath or a people pleaser. They're super sensitive to others' vibes, right? So they adjust themselves to keep others happy. But here's the thing, when you're always bending over backward for others, they don't really respect you because you don't seem grounded. You're not standing firm in your own skin. Instead, you're always adapting to fit someone else's mold. Now let me tell you about a game changer. But first, Think back to when you were a kid. Maybe you had a parent who was always critical or had really high expectations. As a kid, you just wanted to make them happy, right? But maybe they didn't give you much attention in return. So you learned to be self-sufficient, to take care of yourself, to not be a bother. You tuned into your surroundings to figure out how to stay safe. And that constant adjusting, that's because you wanted to avoid conflict and feel secure. But here's the thing. When someone else feels uneasy, you pick up on it and suddenly it becomes your problem too. Okay, think of it like this. Everyone has this sort of energy bubble around them, right? It's like an invisible force field. As a kid, you learn to distinguish between your own bubble and other people's bubbles. You're taught to have your own opinions, do your own thing, and not let other stuff bother you. That's healthy growing up. But for empaths and people pleasers, it's a bit different. As kids, instead of keeping their bubble to themselves, they kind of let everyone else in. Instead of feeling grounded in their own space, they're up in their heads, trying to figure out what everyone else is feeling. It's like they take on the responsibility for everyone's emotions because they're so tuned into others. But here's the thing. It's crucial for empaths and people pleasers to reel that energy back in, to focus on themselves for a change. Here's something a lot of folks miss. The more you're truly yourself, the more magnetic you become. When you're totally present and comfortable in your own skin, you attract the right people and repel the ones who don't vibe with the real you. And that's actually a good thing. 
See, empaths and people pleasers often fear tension and try to avoid rocking the boat, but in reality, a little polarization can be healthy. Now think about this. Why do some kids from the same messed up childhood end up totally different? Like one becomes a narcissist and the other an empath. It's a question I've had on my channel and I've thought about it a lot. Picture this, two kids facing the same tough situation at home. One shuts down their emotions to cope with the stress. It's too much to handle, so they disconnect. They're like, whatever, it doesn't matter. But the other kid cranks up their sensitivity to understand what's going on around them to survive. Both the empath and the narcissist stem from the same trauma, just dealing with it in different ways. One becomes more self-focused, even if it's a fake self, while the other becomes hyper-aware of others' feelings. Both responses are a survival tactic. Narcissists and empaths often find themselves drawn to each other because they're dealing with the same deep wound, abandonment. They just handle it in opposite ways. The narcissist is all about themselves, right? They shut out everyone else's feelings, focus on their own needs, and project this fake image to feel safe. Meanwhile, the empath puts everyone else first, giving and giving in hopes of getting validation and safety in return. Both are kinds of manipulation, just different flavors. But empaths can get stuck playing the victim because it kind of justifies their past. I mean, I've been there. I used to think, hey, I can feel other people's vibes super strong. It's like a superpower. But that mindset can actually be a bit ego-driven, making you feel special but also kind of disconnected from others. It's like those folks who go on about being star seeds in the spiritual community. It's cool, but it can create this spiritual ego that makes it tough to relate to people. I went through a phase like that myself during my awakening journey. All right, let's dive into an individuation. This concept, explored by the famous psychologist Carl Jung, is all about finding your own identity separate from what your parents want for you. It's about bringing your energy back into your own body and asking yourself, who am I? What do I stand for? For many empaths, this journey involves breaking away from parental expectations. I remember feeling pressured to fit my dad's image of success. He had this whole persona he wanted me to embody, from how I dressed to what I pursued in life. But as I grew older, I realized I needed to be true to myself, even if it meant going against his wishes. Individuation is about reclaiming your power and living authentically. It's about saying, this is who I am, and I'm going to live my life on my terms. For me, that meant pursuing YouTube instead of the traditional path my dad envisioned. It wasn't easy, and there were doubts along the way. But I knew deep down it was the right choice for me. But individuation isn't just about defying authority. It's about finding your own path and feeling confident in your decisions. It's about realizing that you don't need to seek validation from others to feel worthy. Take, for example, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. They made headlines when they stepped away from their royal duties to live life on their own terms. By doing so, they embraced their individuality and empowered themselves to create the life they wanted. So, if you're an empath or a people pleaser, the key to transforming your life lies in individuation. It's about reclaiming your identity letting go of past patterns, and embracing your true self. And if you're ready to embark on this journey, check out my Frame Technique video for practical steps to tap into your own reality. Remember, you have the power to rewrite your story and create the life you've always dreamed of. So, are you ready to step into your own power and embrace who you truly are? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more empowering content. Together, we can change our lives from the inside out. Peace out.